bit, or two weeks ago, I guess, we talked a little bit about the low calorie density foods. So we're gonna kind of expand on that because I mentioned that a lot of us are malnutrition because we don't eat enough of the right calories. So this is a recipe that's diabetic friendly, it's kid friendly, but it's a way to volumize. I like to eat a lot of food, but I eat a lot of food that doesn't have calorie density. So I can eat a lot without using up my cash bank of calories. So we're gonna kind of volumize a snack with a healthy dip by adding the fruits and the vegetables to it because a lot of our clients bring crackers for snack. And crackers really, there is no such thing as a healthy cracker, they're just not. And then they're not getting any protein with that. So we need to volumize our snacks by adding things like fruit and vegetables. Now, if you're a diabetic, the lower sugar fruits are the berries. So we have, I have strawberries here today, but strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries are lower on the sugar count as far as fruit goes. Bananas are a little bit on the high end. So you have to kind of be careful with the amounts if you have a diabetic. You definitely don't want them to eat more than a half of a banana at a time. Okay, so that's just something to watch for. Carrots, we've talked about how they have a higher content of sugar, but if we're gonna turn around and eat a candy bar, the carrot's a better choice. So today we're gonna do carrots and chocolate, which is just as good as a candy bar as far as I'm concerned. And I made this last week, and my kids thought it was pretty amazing. So I think you're gonna like it. It's a healthy option. We're gonna really get some good protein because garbanzo beans are a really good lean protein. Um, so one of the things that is a great big initiative with um, the Heart Association and the USDA is five a day. They want us to eat five cups and five colors a day. And I made a copy of this really amazing handout. It's an infographic actually. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the link to Allison and maybe we can post that on the Facebook page because there's a lot of good information on there and there's no way I can give you a close-up of it to show you all the detail. But basically, we're trying to get people to eat more color. And the different color foods are like the blues and the purples. We've got the blueberries, we've got blackberries, raisins, dates, grapes, reds and pinks. Um, we have cherries, we have cranberries, we have apples strawberries, tomatoes, watermelon, the green things. We've already sampled the asparagus, which everybody really liked. Um, we can do spinach, cabbage, peas, um, zucchini. We tried the zucchini boat. So we're trying to add color, but none of these recipes have really been hard. They're like five minutes prep or less, and most of it's done in the microwave, so our clients can pretty much do this exercise of cooking with a staff and it's pretty simple. Um, some white things, we have bananas, um, cauliflower, garlic, and then some examples of orange and yellow are peaches, pineapple, pumpkin, we've done stuff with pumpkin, sweet potatoes, there's different colored apples. So you can see there's a lot of information on this handout. So I'll, I'll send that to Allison and we'll put that link out there and I'll also do a close-up of it after the video so that if those watching YouTube can see it up close also. But let's really try to get our clients to eat five colors a day, five cups a day, okay? It's really simple to do by volumizing with the fruits and the vegetables with those healthy lean proteins. Something that I thought of this morning on my drive here is there are two different camps of people. And my husband and I are kind of in the same camp. Now, my husband works in pharmaceuticals, but he's been a mechanic slash engineer for, since he was five. He rebuilt his first motor when he was five years old. So he's in the camp like me. There are those of us that are in a camp where we do all the preventive maintenance and build reliability into our equipment. I build reliability into my body with good food, healthy food, and movement. He tries to build reliability into his equipment. He's always doing preventive maintenance. So we're in the same camp, and it's kind of fun that we talk about that all the time, how if everybody listened to me, he would be out of a job because he makes the drugs. 
which people would rather take the drugs than do the exercise or eat the foods. There's the other camp who they wait until everything breaks down and then they go to the doctor and they, they go and they say, well, what can you do for me? They wait until everything's broken and when you do that, you're actually costing yourself more money because it costs more to fix it after than to put the investment in at the beginning. So our goal as exercise and nutrition professionals is to try to get people to do that preventive maintenance. Your health, if you have it, you have a million dollars in your pocket. And every time you make those good choices, you're putting that money back in your pocket. So when you get older, you have a better quality of life and it ends up costing you less in the long run. So I think as staff and as just good, decent human beings, we gotta do the best we can to do the best we can with that investment and make sure that we're in the right camp, okay? Million dollars in your pocket. Some of our clients aren't able to make those choices on their own. We need to really help encourage them and give them the right information. 80% is what we eat, 20% is movement. So the nutrition that I'm trying to teach you every week is really trying to give you that investment. And it's simple and all of us can do this. The 20% that's movement, I hear a lot of excuses and I, there isn't one that I haven't heard in the 15 years I've been a certified trainer. But all of us have five minutes. We'll spend a half an hour on Facebook or Instagram every day. We can spend hours on email, but we won't give ourselves five minutes to do a simple little workout that keeps us moving forward in the right direction. So even if it's five minutes of your day, eating good foods, five minutes of your day moving. I've done workouts while I stand in front of the stove cooking dinner, if that's all the time I have. We have to find a way to make that investment, okay? So really encourage your, your staff and your clients to really try to get on the right camp, okay? That's my soapbox lecture for the day. Let's get on to making some chocolate hummus, okay? I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer, but just got to give you the information, okay? So the chocolate hummus is diabetic friendly. We're going to make the chocolate here. But I did ex um, experiment because there was a group a couple weeks ago that had some clients that couldn't eat chocolate. And it was the mug cake. And I said, well, maybe we could substitute the vanilla protein powder. So I brought the protein powder and it's vanilla flavored. I did try it at home and it worked just fine. So if you have clients that can't have chocolate, instead of using the cocoa, just use the protein powder, okay? It worked just as well. And it's still a lean protein, and it doesn't have any added sugars to it, so it's still going to be diabetic friendly. So just know that that's an option. I'm probably going to make a little of both for the clients here in Columbus to sample. So this is really simple. We're going to take one and a half cups of garbanzo beans, and we're going to put them in our food processor, which all of our clients in-house, they usually have a food processor. I'm going to use tahini today, but when I made this at home, I used my natural sunflower butter just because that's all I had, and it worked just fine. So if you don't want to go through the expense of buying the tahini, tahini is just a sesame paste. You might have clients that are allergic to seeds and they can't have that, so that's something to consider. Um, I'm going to add the cocoa first just because I don't want my tablespoon to be all full of maple syrup and everything else. So. The recipe calls for four tablespoons of cocoa. And again, the dark chocolate is antioxidants, and a lot of us like our chocolate, so it's an easy, healthy thing to add when you want a healthy snack, okay? Um, two tablespoons of maple syrup. We have used the heck out of this maple syrup. I'm almost out here, if I can get it open. But that's why I always have it in my refrigerator, because I use it for so many things. Now, could you use honey? Probably. Honey is a lot sweeter and a lot thicker, so you would probably have to use less if you were substituting. Two tablespoons of maple syrup. 
And then I've got tahini. I'm going to do two tablespoons of tahini. So again, if you don't have the tahini, you could use the peanut butter. And tahini is a lot thinner. So if you do the peanut butter, at the end when you're done um, processing it, if it's a little bit too thick for your clients, you just add a little bit of water, a teaspoon at a time, and then you can get it to the right consistency. Teaspoon of vanilla. I'm almost out of vanilla too because I love vanilla and we use it just about every week. So I'm going to go ahead and process this. And then what I'm going to do is we have some apples here. I'm going to cut the apples in bite-sized pieces. We've got some strawberries. It's strawberry season. My strawberries are full of um, blooms, so pretty soon I'm going to be picking all kinds of berries. I've got some bananas and some carrots. Another option would be pretzels. So again, I mentioned earlier how a lot of our clients bring um, crackers for snack. If they did, they could put this on a healthier cracker. Not that there is such a thing. Pretzels aren't really that healthy either, but if they're gonna bring them, they should really try to combine it with a protein because it gives them a little bit better blood sugar control, which we've talked about just about every week. Helps keep their metabolism up. The protein helps them maintain muscle mass because we need to feed the muscle protein for it to stay strong. So I'm not going to process this while you guys are listening because it's really loud. But you're just going to blend it in the food processor, add a little bit of water until you get it to the right consistency. I'm going to decorate this plate with the fruit and I'm going to put a little bit in the center and I'm going to give the clients here some samples. I might even be nice to the corporate side and bring them some samples too. We'll see how we do. Does anybody have any questions? You want to unmute and ask questions? So what was the main lesson today? Five a day, five cups a day. Your hand is the size of a cup. So five colors, five cups a day. I, okay, why a question? This is kind of crackers. I love crackers. You said there's no such thing as a healthy cracker, but healthier cracker? <laughs> The reason I say that is over my 15 years of experience, a lot of the clients that I've worked with, they'll eat crackers that they think are healthy instead of something else like nuts, which are, they're higher in calorie density and they're higher in calories. So people don't want to eat them because they, they think that they're, they're too fattening and there's too many calories in them. And yet they'll sit down and eat a whole box of crackers. So if you're, if you're looking at the difference between the calories and the crackers and the calories and the nuts, you're getting more bang for your buck out of the nuts because there's a lot of good nutrients. You just have to portion control. And if you are going to eat crackers, then try to eat them with something like this hummus where you eat less of them and then fill up on the lean proteins because a cracker is a carbohydrate even if it has a high fiber content, there's nothing else in there. So you need really to have the five colors, but you also need the balance. You need the carbs, you need the proteins, and you need the fats at every meal because they work together to help keep you satiated and they also help keep that blood sugar from spiking. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you're going to eat a cracker, it's kind of like the bread when we did the nutrition labels. You want to look for a cracker that's probably three grams of fiber or higher, which most of our clients don't eat those. They eat, you know, goldfish crackers and Cheez-Its and Cheetos and chips. And that's really not a healthy snack. It's convenient. It's easy to throw in their lunchbox, but it's not helpful to them. So I'm not saying you shouldn't have them, but they're, it's always a, an argument of, well, how do you spend those calories? And to me, that's not a very good investment. Uh, Rita asked about pita bread or chips, pita chips. Depends on their fiber content. I don't, I don't know if I've ever actually had them. So I'd have to look at the label, but again, if it's not three grams or more, 
And if they're fried, then you're, they're not any healthier than a potato chip. And, and sometimes we get, we feel like we're doing something healthy because it says 100% whatever or pita bread. Oh, it, it means it's healthy. You really got to look at those labels um, and, and make sure because there could be added sugar to them. I, I honestly don't know, but just read the label. And if you ever have a question, just send me an email and a picture of the label and I'll try to help you decipher what it means if you're not really sure. Anybody else? Has anybody ever had regular hummus? Like roasted red pepper? So regular hummus is really good. So this, I think you're gonna like this because it's it feels more, I don't know, dessert-like. I always, I'm always excited when I find things that, you know, I, I can't have of the real thing, so now I find a substitute that I actually like. When I made it, I made it with the chocolate and the sunflower butter because I honestly think the greatest thing together is peanut butter and chocolate. And I thought it was really good, even though I can't have peanut butter, but I found a healthy substitute for something that I no longer can eat that I sometimes crave. And that's, you know, that's cool too. I don't know if you guys know this, but the three things that people crave is crunch, salt, and sweet. So if you're getting a little bit of crunch and a little bit of sweet, you could always add a, a couple of crackers or a couple pretzels and, and not just eat crackers and pretzels, but eat it with everything else. And then you're gonna get the salt, the crunch, and the sweet. And it might eliminate your cravings. Plus it'll keep your blood sugar stable for hours. And that's usually when people start overeating is when they're over hungry and they're craving something. This way you cover all the bases and you get those three things out of the way. You're gonna eat healthier all day long, keep that blood sugar stable. This might be another class, but I'm really curious about cravings and what causes those certain things. I, I don't know if you can talk about that, but I think I'm interested to know, I tend to crave salty things. Yes. So I wonder what I'm lacking in my body that makes me want that. <laughs> okay. That's definitely a doable thing. Another thing I thought of this morning while I was eating my breakfast is I really probably should touch on eating disorders. Not really that we have anorexics and bulimics, but there's, it's called disordered eating, but it's not necessarily just girls in high school. There can be 80 year olds that have disordered eating. And it's really not the extreme, but more so about having that healthy relationship with food because sometimes we turn to food when we're feeling sad or stressed. So emotional eating is, an, is also a form of disordered eating and it isn't necessarily an eating disorder, but when we do that and we get those cravings, that comes from, we turn to that for a reason and we gotta kind of figure out what that is. So certainly cravings and disordered eating are two things that I think I need to touch on in the near future. And some of that can come from, believe it or not, artificial sweeteners. If you eat artificial sweeteners, that's, oh, yeah. that's going to trigger you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. So. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I go back and forth on trying to give up Diet Coke, but I know when I drink a Diet Coke in the morning, my day is going to go a lot differently than if I'm drinking water or unsweetened. Tea. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. So that that I I see that very easily. And it's hard to give up something that I mean I had to give up pretty much everything I loved, and it's I'm not gonna say it's easy because it's not. But if we can find a healthy substitution, it gets us through. And I try to focus on all the wonderful good things that I can eat instead of all the things I no longer can't. Right. So. Sometimes it's just flipping that switch. Anybody else? All right. Um, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do next. I won't be in next week, so we won't have class next week. So it'll probably be the week after. Um, I just got to sit down and kind of figure out what I should do next. I'm trying to do things that are seasonal so that we can find fresh things. I have a question for you guys, and you maybe can answer. 
Do our clients get SNAP benefits? I don't know. Some people might. Because I know probably pre-pandemic, SNAP benefits allowed people that received those benefits to go to the farmer's market and get fresh fruit and vegetables, and it didn't cost them anything. So I was just wondering if our clients get SNAP benefits and if that, if they start to open everything up again, as far as farmer's market, would that be a, a thing that they could utilize? So I was just curious. Columbus's farmer's market opened Saturday. Cool, excellent. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just wondering if they can use and get some free food because that's an easy way for them to volumize their meals if they can go and get it and it doesn't cost them anything. And it's a fun thing to do to go to the farmer's market. Yes. <laughs> yep. So it's an outing. Yeah, I, I, I'll have to reach. I have a friend that works for the Extension Office. She's a registered dietitian. I will. I know she's in Jackson County, but she's friends with the gal here in Bartholomew. I will find out if that's still the case, and, and maybe we can send that as a, hey, guess what? This is a, a available resource for you guys. So. I just don't know how many of them actually receive that benefit, so. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks for joining in everybody. I appreciate all of you taking the time to listen to me lecture on my soapbox, but <laughs> changing one person at a time, that's my job. <laughs> Have a great day everybody.